Welcome to the Bootstrap Mogul Podcast, where we bring you the grassroots tips, tricks, and stories in everything entrepreneurship, digital marketing, and personal development. I'm your host, Andres Olguin. Hello, hello, my incredible listeners. Welcome back to another episode of the Bootstrap Mongol podcast, where we dive deep into the world of freelancing, entrepreneurship, personal development, and the journey to becoming your own boss. I'm your host, Andres Elgin, coming to you with another episode packed with insights, strategies, and stories designed to ignite your passion and fast track your path to success. Now, if you're tuning in for the first time, let me extend a warm, hearty welcome to you. You are in for a treat. Here on the Bootstrap Mogul Podcast, we're all about empowering you, and we aim to arm you with the tools, knowledge, and inspiration you need to turn your dreams into reality. Now, whether you're just flirting with the idea of starting your own gig or you're deep in the trenches building your empire, this is the place to fuel your journey. Today, we're zeroing in on a topic that I believe is absolutely crucial for anyone stepping into the freelance world. We're going to unpack the five most common pitfalls that catch new freelancers off guard. Yes, you heard me right. While embarking on your freelance journey is undoubtedly exciting, it's not without hurdles. And let's be honest, who wants to learn everything the hard way? Not me, and I bet not you either. So here's the thing, understanding these mistakes is more than just knowing about what not to do. It's about strategically sidestepping these common traps so you can accelerate your journey from an aspiring freelancer to an accomplished in-demand professional. Imagine smoothing out the road ahead, making your journey more enjoyable and reaching your goals faster. That's exactly what we're aiming for today. Now, I know what you're thinking, oh, but Andres, how do I avoid mistakes I don't even know I'm making? Well, that's a great question, and that's exactly why we're here. By the end of this episode, you'll not only be able to spot those pitfalls from a mile away, but you'll also be equipped with practical, actionable strategies to navigate around them with grace and confidence. So whether you're jotting down notes for your big leap into freelancing or you're already on the path and looking to refine your strategy, today's episode is tailored just for you. We're all about building bridges to your success, making sure you have every tool at your disposal to build the freelance career of your dreams. All right, are you ready to dive in? Let's get this show on the road and uncover those pesky pitfalls waiting for you to trip up and, more importantly, how to leap over them like a pro. So let's dive into the first major pitfall, which is charging too little. Trust me, understanding your worth and learning how to price your services right is a game changer in the freelance world. Don't go anywhere because we are going to continue with this discussion. So before we dive into the nitty gritty of today's topic, let's take a moment to paint a picture. Imagine this. You wake up naturally without an alarm blaring in your ear. You enjoy your morning coffee in peace, not in a rush, and you sit down to work on projects that you're genuinely excited about. No more endless meetings or reports that don't seem to matter because you're finally living the dream on your terms. Sounds perfect, right? Well, that's the dream of freelancing that many of us hold dear. And while it's absolutely attainable, there's a bit of reality we need to blend with our dreams to make them come true. The transition from a traditional 9 to 5 job to running a successful freelance business is thrilling, but let's not sugarcoat it. It comes with its own set of challenges. Now, here's where the magic happens. Your mindset and your preparedness are your best allies in this journey. Think of them as your personal toolkit for success. Mindset, because how you view the challenges and opportunities ahead will shape your path. And preparedness, because knowing what lies ahead and having a plan is like having a map in uncharted territory. Now let's talk about mindset first. It's all about embracing a growth mindset. This means seeing challenges not as insurmountable barriers, but as opportunities to learn and grow. It's about shifting from thinking, I can't do this, to asking, how can I make this work? It's powerful and it changes everything. 
And then there's preparedness. Venturing into freelancing without a plan is like setting sail without a compass. Sure, you might eventually find your way, but why leave it to chance? Start by understanding the market, your niche, and most importantly, your value. What problems are you solving for your clients, and how does your work make their lives easier, better, or more profitable? Now, you might be wondering, but where do I even start? First, breathe. You've got this. Begin with small, manageable goals. Maybe it's setting up a professional website, creating a portfolio, or even just reaching out to potential clients for informational interviews. Each step you take builds your path to success. Now remember, the difference between the dream and the reality of freelancing is not the absence of challenges. It's how you choose to face them. With the right mindset and a solid plan, what once seemed like obstacles become stepping tones. So my friends, as we gear up to tackle the five common pitfalls of freelancing, keep these powerful tools close. Mindset and preparedness. They're not just your ticket to avoiding common mistakes. They are your foundation for building a thriving freelance business that aligns with that beautiful dream we talked about. And with that, let's dive into our first major pitfall, charging too little. Understanding your worth is crucial, and I'm here to guide you through it. Now let's talk about something I know hits home for a lot of us when we're just starting out, charging too little for our services. It's a common temptation, right? You think if I price myself lower, I'll attract more clients quickly. But here's the twist. Undervaluing your services can do more harm than good in the long run. Let's unpack this together. So first off, it's totally understandable why you might lean towards charging less. Maybe it's a lack of confidence in your new venture or the fear that no one will pay what you truly deserve. You're stepping into a new arena. And it's natural to feel like you need to earn your stripes. But here's the catch. By setting your rates too low, you're not just impacting your income, you're potentially setting a precedent that undervalues your work and expertise. And trust me, raising prices later can be a tricky conversation with your clients. So how do you navigate this? How do you ensure that you're not falling into the trap of charging too little? Let's walk through some steps together. So first, understanding your value. First and foremost, recognize the value you bring to the table. This goes beyond just your time. It's about the solutions you provide, the problems you solve, and the expertise that you offer. Ask yourself, what unique benefits do my services offer to my clients? How does my work improve their business or life? And then write these down. Seeing your value spelled out can be a powerful reminder that your work is worth more. Step two, researching market rates. Next, let's do some homework. Researching what others in your field are charging is crucial. This doesn't mean you should just copy what you see, but it gives you a benchmark. Look for freelancers with similar experience and services, and websites like Glassdoor, Payscale, and even freelance forums can provide insights. Remember, rates can vary widely by location, specialization, and demand, so take these factors into account when setting your own prices. Step three, covering your expenses. Now let's talk numbers. Calculating your rates isn't just about what feels right, it should be grounded in reality. So consider your business expenses, taxes, and your personal living costs. How much do you need to earn to cover these and still have a profit margin? Don't forget, as a freelancer, you're also responsible for benefits like health insurance and retirement savings. A simple formula to start with is your desired salary plus your expenses divided by your billable hours, which equals your hourly rate. But remember, it's just the beginning. You'll need to adjust as you gain more insight into your business and industry standards. Now, I know diving into the numbers can feel daunting at first, but it's a crucial step in building a sustainable freelance business. And here's a little secret. Clients who recognize and are willing to pay for quality, those are the ones you want to work with. They're the ones who will value your expertise, respect your time, and contribute to a fulfilling freelance career. So, my friends, resist the temptation to undervalue yourself. Remember, you're not just selling time, 
you are offering a valuable service that solves a need. By setting your rates with confidence and clarity, you're not just advocating for your worth, you're also setting the stage for a successful, profitable freelance journey. Now, we're going to tackle the next pitfall, which is taking on every job that comes your way. Learning to say no is just as important as knowing when to say yes. So if there's one thing I see time and time again with new freelancers is the eagerness to jump at every opportunity. Look, I get it. The thrill of finally being your own boss and getting those first few client inquiries is unbeatable. But here's where we need to hit the pause button and talk about why saying yes to everything can actually backfire. Yes, you heard that right. It's about finding the right balance between being opportunistic and strategic. So let's dive into this together. First off, the temptation to accept every project that comes your way is understandable. It's not just about the income, it's also about building your portfolio and gaining experience. However, overcommitment can lead to burnout and taking on misaligned projects can dilute your brand and distract you from your core goals. The key here is not to spread yourself too thin, but to build a focused and sustainable freelance business. So how do you navigate this? How do you ensure that you're saying yes to the right opportunities and setting clear boundaries? Let's explore some strategies together. So strategy one, define your niche and services. Start by clearly defining what you do and the type of clients you want to serve. This clarity helps you attract projects that are a better fit for your skills and goals. And it's tempting to be a jack of all trades, but remember, specializing can make you the go-to person in your area of expertise. Now, this doesn't mean you can't ever expand or evolve, but having a clear focus will guide your decision-making process. Strategy two, evaluate each opportunity carefully. Before saying yes, ask yourself a few questions. Does this project align with my goals? Can I deliver exceptional work within the given time frame? Will this project add value to my portfolio or my business in the long run? Now, if you're hesitating on any of these, it might be a sign to reconsider. Remember, every project you take on should move you closer to your broader goals, not away from them. Strategy three, learn to say no gracefully. Now, saying no can be tough, but it's a critical skill for maintaining your sanity and the quality of your work. When you need to turn down a project, do it gracefully. Thank them for considering you, briefly explain why it's not a fit at the moment, and if possible, refer them to another freelancer who might be better suited. This keeps the door open for future opportunities and maintains a positive professional relationship. Strategy four, set clear boundaries. Setting boundaries is not just about managing your workload. It's also about managing client expectations. So be clear about your availability, communication preferences, and project timelines from the get-go. This helps prevent scope creep and ensures both you and your clients have a clear understanding of what to expect. Now, I know this might feel like a balancing act, especially in the early days when you're eager to build momentum, but trust me, Being selective and strategic about the projects you take on will not only help you avoid burnout, but also ensure that you're building a freelance business that's fulfilling, sustainable, and aligned with your vision. So my fellow freelancers, embrace the power of saying no to the wrong opportunities so you can say yes to the right ones. Remember, every project you choose to work on is a brick in the foundation of your freelance career. Choose wisely and build a career that you are proud of. Up next, let's tackle another crucial topic, which we kind of talked a little bit about, which is the risk of burnout. Now, this is something that's really close to my heart and something I personally struggle with, and it's crucial for every freelancer out there. The importance of self-care and the very real risk of burnout. It's a conversation we need to have because, let's face it, Burning out doesn't just more than just dim your light. It can put your entire freelance dream at risk. Burnout, it sneaks up on you. One minute, you're juggling your projects and chasing deadlines and feeling unstoppable. The next, you're struggling to find the motivation to even open your laptop. 
It's a stark reality many of us face when we neglect the balance between work and life. Remember, just because you can work anytime doesn't mean you should work all the time. So how do we keep the flame of our passion burning bright without burning ourselves out? Well, it starts with integrating self-care routines and setting healthy work boundaries. Let's dive into some strategies that can help keep you on a sustainable path. Now, first, define your work hours. Just because your home might also be your office doesn't mean you're on duty 24-7. Set specific work hours and stick to them as much as possible. This not only helps you structure your day, but it also signals to your brain when it's time to work and when it's time to rest. And hey, it's okay to adjust these hours based on your most predictive times. The key is consistency. Second, create a dedicated workspace. Having a space that's just for work can do wonders for your productivity and your ability to disconnect. It doesn't have to be a fancy office. Even a small desk that's reserved for work activities can create, can create a psychological boundary between work time and downtime. Third, prioritize tasks and delegate when possible. Not everything on your to-do list is mission critical. Learn to prioritize tasks based on urgency and importance. And if you're in a position to do so, don't be afraid to delegate. Whether it's administrative tasks, social media management, or anything else that can be handled by someone else, delegating frees you up to focus on what you do best. Strategy four, schedule regular breaks. Working nonstop is a one-way ticket to burnout city. Schedule short breaks throughout your day to step away from your desk. Take a walk, do some stretches, or just sit and breathe. These breaks aren't just good for your body, they're crucial for your mental health too. Strategy five, cultivate interests outside of work. Now, your freelance business might be your passion, but it shouldn't be your entire life. Cultivate interests outside of work hobbies, social activities, or anything that brings you joy and relaxation. These activities not only enrich your life, but they also prevent your world from shrinking down to just work. Now, my friends, integrating these self-care routines and work boundaries isn't just about avoiding burnout. It's about building a freelance life that's not only successful, but also joyous and sustainable. It's about ensuring that the journey is the reward, not just the destination. So take care of yourself. Remember, your health and well-being are the most valuable assets you have on this journey. Without them, everything else becomes irrelevant. Let's commit to not just being successful freelancers, but happy and healthy ones too. Next, let's talk about a pitfall that can catch even the most seasoned freelancers off guard forgetting to do your marketing. Now, this is one mistake that's deceptively easy to make, but it can really have long-term impacts on your business. Now, it sounds counterintuitive, right? You have clients, you're busy, life is good. Why worry about marketing? Well, let's dive into this together and uncover why continuous marketing is not just important, but absolutely essential for the health and growth of your freelance business. Now, first off, it's completely understandable why marketing might take a back seat when you're swamped with work. Your focus is on delivering exceptional results for your current clients, and there are only so many hours in a day. However, the freelance world is inherently dynamic, and client needs can change on a dime. Today's full schedule can quickly become tomorrow's search for work if you're not careful. That's where continuous marketing comes in. Continuous marketing is essentially about keeping the pipeline of potential work filled. It's your safety net, ensuring that even when one project ends, there are others waiting in the wings. But more than that, it's about building your brand, establishing authority in your niche, and staying top of mind with both current and potential clients. So how can you keep marketing your business without overwhelming your already packed schedule? Here are some easy to implement strategies tailored for the busy freelancer. So social media can be a double-edged sword, but used wisely, it's a powerful marketing tool. You don't need to be everywhere. Instead, focus on one or two platforms where your ideal clients hang out. 
Schedule regular posts that showcase your expertise, share insights into your process, or highlight client testimonials. Tools like Later or Vista Social can help you schedule content in advance, making this task less time-consuming. Now, email marketing is far from dead. In fact, it's one of the most effective ways to keep in touch with past clients and warm leads. Consider sending a monthly newsletter that provides value to your subscribers, whether that's industry insights, tips, or updates on your services. This keeps you on their radar and can often lead to repeat business or referrals. Now, never underestimate the power of networking. So attend industry webinars, join online forums, or participate in local business groups. Collaboration with peers can also lead to new opportunities. Perhaps there's a project that's too big for one person or someone in your network specializes in an area you don't. By referring work to each other, you not only help out a colleague, but you also open the door to future reciprocation. And then whether it's blogging, podcasting, or creating videos, consistent content creation is key to establishing your authority and driving organic traffic to your website. Now, you don't have to do it all. Pick a format that works for you and your audience. The key is consistency. Even one blog post a month is better than none if it provides value and enhances your visibility online. Now, I know adding marketing to your already busy schedule might seem daunting, but remember, you're investing in the future of your business. Even dedicating an hour a week to marketing efforts can make a significant difference in maintaining a steady flow of projects and clients. So, my fellow freelancers, let's commit to not letting marketing fall by the wayside no matter how busy we get. Your future self will thank you for the steady stream of work and the business growth that comes from these continuous efforts. Up next, let's tackle our final pitfall, avoiding long-term planning. Now, I know when you're in the thick of meeting deadlines and juggling projects, taking a moment to zoom out and think about the future can feel like a luxury you can't afford. But here's the truth. Without a vision for the future, it's easy to get lost in the day-to-day and miss out on opportunities for growth and evolution. So let's unpack this together. Getting caught up in the immediate needs of your business is natural. After all, those projects won't complete themselves. But when you're so focused on the here and now without a plan for where you're headed, you risk stagnating. Imagine driving without a destination in mind. You might enjoy the scenery for a while, but eventually you wish you had chosen a path. So how do we combat this? Well, how do we ensure that we're not just surviving but thriving and planning for a future that excites us? Let's walk through some actionable advice. So first, define your vision. Start by asking yourself, where do I want to be one year from now? What about five years? What does success look like for me? This vision will be your guiding star, the beacon that keeps you moving forward even when things get tough. So write it down, make it as vivid as possible, and don't be afraid to dream big. Step two, set long-term goals. With your vision in mind, break it down into long-term goals. Now, these should be significant milestones that will require time and effort to achieve, but will ultimately lead you to your vision. Think expanding your service offerings, hitting a certain income level, or establishing yourself as a thought leader in your niche. Step three, create a roadmap. Knowing your goals is great, but you need a plan to get there. This is where your roadmap comes in. So for each goal, outline the steps you need to take, the resources you might need, and potential obstacles. Now, this plan doesn't have to be set in stone. Think of it more as a GPS system that can recalibrate as needed. And step four, schedule regular check-ins. So here's where many of us fall short. We set the plan and then we forget about it. To avoid this, schedule regular check-ins with yourself. Now, once a month, once a quarter, whatever works for you. Use this time to assess your progress, celebrate your wins, and adjust your course if needed. This practice not only keeps you aligned with your goals, but it also encourages a mindset of growth and adaptability. Now, I know adding one more thing to your to-do list might seem daunting, But trust me, this is the kind of work that pays dividends in the long run. By dedicating time to long-term planning, you're not just working in your business, 
You're working on your business, creating a path to a future that's not only successful, but fulfilling. So my fellow freelancers, let's commit to looking beyond the day-to-day. Let's carve out time for strategic planning, for dreaming big, and for setting the course to a future we're excited about. Remember, you're the captain of this ship, and with a clear destination in mind, there's no limit to how far you can go. Well, my amazing listeners, we've navigated through the five common pitfalls that can trip up new freelancers. Now it's time to wrap up today's episode with some golden nuggets. Actionable tips and strategies that not, will not only help you avoid these mistakes, but also propel you toward a thriving freelance career. So we talked about charging too little. So understand your worth. Start by acknowledging the value you bring to your clients. Reflect on your skills, experience, and the unique solutions you offer. We also talked about saying yes to everything. So you know you want to clearly outline the services you offer and the ideal clients you want to work with. This will help you filter out projects that don't align with your goals. And learn to say no, because remember, every no to the wrong project is a yes to better opportunities. Neglecting self-care and facing burnout. Make sure to block out time in your calendar for rest and activities you enjoy outside of work. Treat this time as non-negotiable. Forgetting to market your business. So make sure that you are allocating time each week for marketing activities, activities even when you're busy. This ensures a steady pipeline of future projects. And overlooking long-term planning. You want to clearly define where you want your freelance business to be in the future. And then break these down into actionable steps. And there you have it, folks. Practical steps you can start implementing today to build a successful and a sustainable freelance career. Remember, the key to overcoming these common challenges lies in continuous learning, effective networking, and seeking mentorship. Never underestimate the power of a strong support network and the value of learning from those who've walked the path before you. As we close today's episode, I want to leave you with this thought. Every freelancer's journey is unique but the road to success is paved with learning from our experiences and the wisdom of others. So embrace the challenges, celebrate your victories, and always, always keep moving forward. You've got this. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Bootstrap Mogul Podcast. I'm your host, Andres Olguin, and it's been an absolute pleasure guiding you through these tips and strategies. Until next time, keep dreaming big and taking action. I will talk to you in the next episode. We'll be right back.